Do you ever wonder if you spend too much time online? How can the amount of time spent on social media influence someone's mental health? What other factors play a role? In this science project, you investigate which variables correlate with better or worse mental health scores using a machine learning algorithm called the random forest algorithm. First, on the project page, you want to scroll all the way down here to setting up the Google Colab environment and download the Python notebook and the CSV file. Then you want to go to your My Drive, create a folder called Social Media Addiction, and upload the Python notebook and the CSV file. Then to open the Python notebook, all you need to do is double click on the file. If you've never used Google Colab before, Google Colab is a platform where you can write, run, and share code. To run a code block, you can either click on the play button here, or click on the code block and hold Control Enter on your keyboard, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a code block has been run by the output here or by the green check mark over here. You can add a code block by clicking on this button plus code over here and delete it by clicking on the trash icon next to each code block. Now, let's get started with the code. We'll start by importing the libraries that we'll be using for this project. To import them, all you need to do is run this code block. This makes it so that we can access functions that other people have already created. And this next code block will mount the Google Drive so that we can have access to the CSV file we uploaded earlier. Now, we'll load our data into a pandas data frame by running this code block here. Take a moment to take a look at your data set. You can see that it contains multiple different factors that could possibly affect mental health, including age, gender, academic level, what country they're from, how many hours they use social media a day, their most used platform, whether that it affects their academic performance or not, and so on. Now, let's pre-process this data. In this first code block 2a, we'll be dropping the column student ID and country. The reason that we'll be dropping the student ID column is because every student ID is unique and someone's student ID number will likely not lead to them having worse or better mental health. The reason we'll be dropping the country column is because we don't have enough data from each country to derive some kind of conclusion about that country's mental health. We can check the value counts of each country by running this code that I just pasted here. And we can see we have 53 respondents from India, 40 from USA, and so on. And a lot of countries only have one respondent. For simplicity, and so that we can focus on the other columns, we'll simply be dropping the country column. And to drop these columns, all you need to do is run this code block. Now we can see that the student ID column and the country column are gone from this data frame. You can come back to this code block later if you decide to drop more columns. Now we'll get started with label encoding. And the reason we label encode our data is because machine learning algorithms learn better with numbers than words. So we'll be assigning each word to a number. So let's see the unique values for gender. Note that for this particular data set, it does not include additional or non-binary options for gender. Now we'll be defining the mapping for gender. And in this particular case, since there are only two values, it doesn't matter which one you assign zero and which one you assign one. So I'm just going to assign male to zero and female to one, and then run this code block. We can now see that in the gender column, instead of male and female, we now see 0 and 1 values. Now on to the next features. We'll be using the unique function to find the unique values of the academic level feature. And we can do that by going back to coolblock 2b where we found the unique values of gender. Copy it and then paste it down here and then change the variable inside to academic level and then run this code block. We can see that there are three different values for academic level, which are undergraduate, graduate, and high school. And now that there are more than two different values, the order does kind of matter. So for this, we're going to label high school as zero, and then undergraduate as one, and then graduate as two, and then run this code block. My best practice for features that have an order to them, you should also label them in order. We can now see in the academic level column, 
high school undergraduate and graduate has been replaced by 0, 1, and 2. Now we'll move on to the next variable which is affects academic performance. And again, we can copy and paste the unique and change the variable inside. So affects academic performance and then run it. And we can again see that there are only two values and again, since there are only two values, it technically doesn't matter which one we assign 0 and 1. But by common coding conventions, no is usually assigned to 0 and yes is usually assigned to 1. So we'll just do that. 0 and 1. And then run this code block. And we can see that under FX academic performance, yes and no have now been replaced by 1 and 0. We can now move on to one-hot encoding the features that do not necessarily have an order to them. For example, there is no real way to tell whether Instagram is worse than Twitter or TikTok. You could try to argue that one is worse than the other, but I'll leave that to you to do in the variations. You can use the unique function again to find the unique values of each column. For example, let's look at the most used platforms. And we can see there's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and lots of other ones. Use this code block to find out which features are categorical and have more than two categories. And for those columns, make sure to add them to this list over here. Once you've added the rest of the categorical variables, make sure to run this code block. We can now see that in the new data frame, each platform will have its own column as well as each relationship status right here. This makes it so that each category is treated the same. Now, we'll be doing the final steps to prepare our data for training. First, we'll be separating our x and y by running this code block. We can see what x looks like by creating a code block, typing x, and then enter. We will be able to see that x consists of every column except for mental health score. That is because we'll be using every other feature to predict the mental health score. And if we take a look at y, enter. We can see that it will consist of the single column mental health score. And we can just delete that and now we will be splitting our data set into train and test and all you need to do is run this code block. From here we can see that our train data set consists of 564 students with 23 features each and the testing data set will consist of 141 students. On to training our model. I will be using a random forest regressor model but feel free to use other models such as logistic regression or KNN. Just note that if you do use other models you may have to pre-process your data differently. To train the model all you need to do is run this code block and then to create predictions all you need to do is run the second code block. This code block will print all of the model's predictions for the test data set. Let's see how well our model did. We'll first print out the mean absolute error or MAE. The MAE shows how close predictions are to actual values by averaging the size of errors. For our random forest model we get an MAE of about 0.1 which means that on average, our model is off by about 0.15 points. And our MSE is about 0.86. MSE stands for mean squared error. It is the average square difference between the predicted and actual values. And it is mainly used if you want to penalize larger errors. But since our MAE turned out to be less than 1, our MSE turned out to be even smaller. From these two metrics, we can see that our random forest model did pretty well to predict students' mental health scores. The next code block will calculate the R squared value, which is another statistical measure that assesses how well the model predicted the actual data point. And the closer this value is to 1, the more accurately the model was able to predict. Here we get a score of 0.93, which is pretty close to 1. And ideally, we'd like these points to be as close to the diagonal line as possible because we want the predicted values to be the same as the actual values. Here we can see the points are really close. They don't really vary by more than one point. Next, we'll be graphing the feature importance graph by running the next code block. This graph shows the top features the model considers most important when making predictions. Each horizontal bar represents a feature and the length of that bar represents how much that feature contributed to the model's decisions. What this graph is telling us is that these are the top 10 most important features for determining someone's mental health score. You can see more features by going back up and then changing the top end to maybe 15, run the block again, and now we'll see more features. 
try to think of reasons why some features have stronger correlations with mental health scores, but remember that correlation does not imply causation. This next code block will display a graph that shows how a chosen feature, like average daily screen time, can relate to the mental health score. If the trend slopes down, that means this feature may be linked to lower mental health. And if the trend slopes up, that means that feature may be linked to higher mental health. You can change the graph by changing this value here into a different feature. But remember that this graph only works with numerical features, such as average hours slept per night or addicted score. But I'll leave that up to you to see the graphs for yourself. This next code block will display a bar graph that shows the average mental health score for each category. Remember earlier that for academic level, we encoded high school to zero, undergraduate to one, and graduate to two. We can see that on average, high schoolers have lower mental health scores than undergraduates or graduates, but remember that this could potentially be skewed. Maybe there are more high schoolers than undergraduates or graduates in this survey, or maybe the reason for the lower average mental health score for high schoolers is because they're more likely to use social media more than undergraduates or graduates. Again, try not to take any of these graphs at face value and try to think of reasons why they may look the way they do. Again, you can change this graph by changing this feature here, but remember that this graph only works for features that we label encoded earlier. This next code block will display a bar graph of the average mental health score for each category of a one hot encoded feature, like most used platform. This graph will show the average mental health score of each category. Again, think about reasons why the graph may look the way it does. Like, are certain platforms actually worse for mental health than others, and why do you think so? Are younger students most likely to use TikTok and Snapchat the most, while older students more likely to use LinkedIn the most? Are certain platforms more likely to be addicting or toxic than others? Again, you can change this graph by changing the feature here, but remember that this would only work for one hot encoded features. In this project, you'll want to have fun with the data analysis and see what kind of insights you can find about the mental health crisis in this data set. And with that, we'll move on to the optional variations of this project. We'll start with exploring some correlation matrices. Here, we can see how the features correlate to each other. The more red or closer to one a value is, the more correlated they are with each other. For example, we can see that age and academic level are very correlated with each other, which makes sense. The closer the value is to zero, that means there is essentially no correlation between the two features. And the darker blue or the closer the value is to negative one, the more negatively correlated they are with each other. And at a quick glance, we can see that there aren't too many features that positively correlate with each other. So let's move on to the next graph and run this. Now we can see a lot more darker blue values which are closer to negative one, meaning they have a negative correlation. But again, I'll leave this analysis for you to do in the variations. There's lots of potential variations you could do with this project. For example, you can filter the data in case you're only interested in high school students or maybe only interested in students who use TikTok. Instead of predicting mental health scores, you could also try predicting average sleep hours, academic performance, etc. You could also try a different machine learning model model like k-nearest neighbors or logistic regression. More variations will be listed on the project page linked in the description below. And with that, we are done with this coding project. Remember that you can find written instructions and this notebook linked in the description below. And for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org. Try to think of reasons why some features have stronger correlations with mental health scores, but remember that correlation does not imply causation. We can now move on to one-hot encoding the features that do not necessarily have an order to them.